then interactive applications so android applications or things like that are interactive and one of the key aspects that you need to realize when you're working interactive applications is that you're basically working in an event loop situation what you're doing is you're dealing with events and hand and triggering events you, uh, whereas if you have a main function where you can just work on the console you get to control what happens you say okay wait until uh, ask the user for some keyboard input and wait until the keyboard input has arrived and wait forever if they don't do anything in an interactive application you want you have to be able to handle operating system events etc and draw events you can't just stop the entire execution of the program just because you want some user input instead what you do is you say okay give me the next message that <coughs> that message get, then gets processed uh, by some uh, you need to handle with that Normally, what you do is something called a message pump or an event loop. Is basically give me the next next message, or wait until I get the next message, execute the message, wait until the next message, execute the message. And there's probably a condition in there, say if I'm not going to stop my program. And good ones will also often have a timeout so that every once in a while. Even if there's no new message, it will stop waiting for a new message. So to to say, okay, have I been told to stop? Things like that. This also leads us to the requirement of primacy of control. So the primacy of control is where is this control? Our UI inverts this control. So control logic is often a lot of the logic is also the same so we have a framework that compa and compa composes that logic and you then interact you plug into such a framework by the way this is not only in android this is even true in javascript most of the way that html controls work is built into the uh, HTML specifications, how events are propagated, etc. It's all specified. Your browser provides that all for you. You just need to handle the events, not figuring out how do I make it sure that this particular element receives the right mouse clicks. So you plug in your own behavior. And there's different ways of plugging in. So, like in Android, you have the base class with methods that basically don't do anything that can be overridden. OnCreate is not one of the empty ones. But if you implement it, for example, on size change to handle the uh, best way where your, uh, the, the, the calculation of the different sizes you need to use to draw your game, when you look at the implementation, on size change is just empty. It doesn't do anything. It's just there so that you can override it and provide uh, and do something if the size of the control changed. Uh, there is, are things that the, that the view actually wants to do when the size changed, but it does not make that public. It doesn't allow you to override that. OnCreate is slightly different in that uh, you need to be able to interfere in OnCreate, and that's why you actually have to call the parent on create and there's these strong checks to make sure that you do so and otherwise it crashes. Another way of handling um, plugging behavior is with listeners, the listener uh, or observer, so the listener pattern. We've done that as well. So if a button is clicked or the game changes, nice bit about listeners is that you can have more than one listener and the listener does not need to be a subclass of the type. So certain things are easily handled with overriding a method. Other ones are better handled with a listener. And there are also, also in the Android API, certain events that you can use either a listener or an override. And there is um, 
you can also provide uh, a behavior provider, which is sort of like a listener, but a little bit more complex, like the recycler views adapter we talked about last week. Or if we have a for each, we can have a, an iterable that we use to provide the actual data points. So as a parameter on the initialization of whatever thing we need, if it's a function or class. And of course, you can also use lambdas to provide this behavior, an inline function, effectively. So, for example, how does your game work? We have our view framework that starts with the um, with the control. Then somehow there has been an on click. There is a lot of things happening before the game view gets its on click. Then at some point it gets an on click event. It says yes, I want to listen to this. Um, or or say it says get. Then you actually have the these. Um, gesture detectors that does the translating the raw events into a more understandable thing because there's two events when you click a mouse there's the mouse down and the mouse up and one of the things that the gesture detector does it just says okay i start recording the thing when the mouse is down and that's where you why you needed to override the on mouse down function say yes i am interested and but what it does then is like okay Later on, it says, okay, if the mouse moves, you are also getting an event. But if the uh, mouse up event is not at the same location as the mouse down event, it says this is not a click. It might be a drag, but it's not a click. And it tries to also do things like, okay, it waits a little bit to see if there is a double click, if you had that. Or is it a long click? What's the duration? Although long click works slightly different, it will actually wait until the duration. If the mouse is still down at that duration, it triggers a long click. Because uh, basically, so because the way a long click works is that a user just clicks it down until he sees an interaction, and then he releases his finger. The releasing of the finger is actually completely ignored at that point. Anyway, when we press our on click function, what we are doing is we are playing our token that will trigger the game change uh, function uh, a listener in the game view again which might even ask the game it has it been won okay if it has been won it might lock the view so I say you cannot change it anymore it might also be able to do something on one clicks so, okay as the game is finished don't allow any clicks um, you also Independently whether you locked your view, you want to invalidate your uh, the view. So that goes into the view framework. The view framework does something. You don't really know what it does or how it does so. And you don't, shouldn't want to know. It's abstracted away. And But invalidate is there. It uh, tells the view framework and the framework that at some point it needs to redraw uh, because this view is no longer, the, the current drawing of the view is no longer valid. Of course, if it's not displaying the view in the first place, it will not redraw it. Only when it's actually being displayed will it redraw. Uh, so, in, uh, what your game also does is handle the game change in your activity. Your game change activity may say, okay, has the game been won now? In that case, I am showing a congratulations dialogue, which again you do is something you invoke on an activity and it will start it will cause a dialogue to be shown. But again, that will only happen after you've finished your on click handler. It will then when the framework gets control back, it will go to actually go and show show the dialogue. So it works all a little bit more complex than you'd think. So the end, you just return uh, from the, the on-click in your game view. And we then go to the other events and including that. So it gets to do a redraw, showing the dialogue, etc. And of course, the view also gives control back to the activity. 
So, and this is what on raw does. So it basically, yeah, at some point it will be called. Then we will look up the state of the game, uses that state of the game to draw it. 